use a product in Kajabi to build your blog. Kajabi's platform is awesome. I, I've really fallen hard and fast in love with this whole platform. I'm moving everything. My plan is to move everything from my WordPress site over to Kajabi. I love this platform that much, and I can see right away that doing this will completely eliminate all the headaches that come along with having a WordPress site, like constantly having to update plugins. I go to like create a new post, but then there's six updates I have to run, which I always feel like I have to run those before. Anyway, it's a mess, and Kajabi seems like it takes all of the uh, maintenance away. You know, Kajabi will maintain the platform, then that way I can focus on producing content. Right. So I went into the Facebook group and because I was thinking about this and I said, you know, it would be great if I could, you know, have the blog laid out in the same manner that a course is. And of course, somebody came in and suggested, well, you could do that. You could just create a course, call it the blog and then create an offer and make it free. And I, being so new to Kajabi, I'm not aware of these things. I don't know enough to think about these things yet. And I thought, wow, that's brilliant. So I got to work and started doing this right away. And here's what I've come up with. So the first thing you're going to do, of course, is you're going to create the product. And yes, this uses a new product, but it's so worth it. Because as you can see, I just started this. I haven't even tried, and I've already got 11 people who have you know, signed up for the free blog. I imagine I'm going to get some friction from some people. I know my audience, there's definitely going to be some people who are going to say, what do I have to give you an email address just to get access to your free blog? And I'm going to tell them because it's just the way it's set up. And it helps me to organize the content better when I do it this way. Plus, if we go and look at the offer that I created, and I'll do it from here, because I've built it into the navigation. So I have the sign up for the blog, right? And it's free. And I'm, I haven't done it yet. I'm going to do a short video that I'm going to put right here on this page that explains, hey, if you don't want to be bothered by my emails, just don't check this off. I've actually got a bunch of people who have checked it off. Uh, and if you do check it off, I'll send you emails letting you know when there's a new post or when there's a new course or lesson or what have you, you know, any updates relating to my site here in general. So that's how I plan to address that friction, which I know I'll get. I know there'll be some people who don't want to give their email address just to get access to a blog. On the other side, it's not a lot to ask for a ton of free content, which anybody who knows me knows I, I'm prolific in terms of producing free content, right? So we create the, uh, the product, then we create the offer. Let's go back to products. And one thing that's important when you create the product that I wanted to point out, because when I first did this, you know, with the defaults, um, it wasn't really organizing it the way I wanted to. You know, when you look at the front end, let me back up here and I go, so here's the, I want to find a way to clean this up a little bit. It's going to take up too much space in my navigation for now. It's okay. Cause I don't have that much here yet. Um, but I need to figure out how to address that at some point. I wish Kajabi would have sub menus, hint, hint. Um, cause with a drop down, this could be easily fixed. Uh, it would just be nerds blogging within that sign up, sign in, right? Easy. Now, um, now I have it organized by category, which is really nice. But how did I do this? That was the thing I had to poke around a little bit to figure out. When you're in the product, you go to customize. And then we'll go to customize again, because this shows you the theme that I've chosen. And I go to product syllabus. And we want to, the syllabus type needs to be categories. The default is posts. So when it was done as posts, it wasn't as clean in terms of, you know, the whole idea being that I'm setting this up to be a blog is I want the categories to be the main sort of driver for how you navigate it, right? So that's going to be an important thing, I think, to check off. Uh, and while you're here, definitely take the time to go through each of these because there's a lot of little things you can set up and change that will make your blog your own, so to speak. Right. So we create the product. We create the free offer. I'm going to do a short video on the checkout and we set the syllabus and the product to uh, to be categories based. OK. Now, since we're doing that, when you set up these categories and let me go into the actual product now. As you set up each of these categories, you'll want to set up an image for that category, right? So in my QuickBooks Online category, I've got this and you want to write the brief description because that's what's going to show up right here. You know, th this means if you're like me and you're doing content on other people's products as I do, then you'll want to use their logos, right? Probably to distinguish, to make it very clear, this is all QuickBooks Online content, which brings up something important. I learned this the hard way years ago because I had made up a t-shirt when I was going to a QuickBooks Connect conference uh, with the logos of some of my favorite apps that I was using at the time. And one of the companies uh, whose logo I used was, an, I guess, an older version of their logo. And I didn't, I wasn't aware, I don't know from these things, but their marketers were, they were really disappointed. Um, I could tell. 
uh, and, and I learned something important that to marketers, their company's logo, that's like their baby. It's really important. So you got to make sure you get the right logo. There's going to be a lot of knockoffs of logos, you know, people who do like different versions or cutouts or what have you or using old versions. So you don't just want to go on the web and grab a logo from an image search. You want to find the actual branding guidelines page or press or media kit from these companies, right? So if I search for a QuickBooks online logo, for example, right? You want to look for and go to the image search. Okay. Here you can see the first result in the image search. It's from their press room with, which has all their logos. These are the logos that they've, that they want you to use, right? So that's what you want to do. I did something similar where I searched for Slack branding guidelines. And that's another thing you can search for. And the first result is their media kit. And Slack is a good example of one where they've actually recently, as of this recording, updated their logo. They made a major change to it. So really important that you want to use the right uh, version of their logo. It can make the whole difference between the company whose product you're covering being excited about what you did and how you presented it versus being really disappointed, actually. Um, apart from that, because you're also going to want to um, you know, use images with each of your posts, so if I go in here to my category here, zoom in, uh, here I use the picture of my guest, Brooke. Uh, here I use the stock photo image, right? Building your accounting firm's word of mouth strategy, a recent Zoom I did. So where do I get images from? People are going to ask. Uh, I love the site Pexels. With Pexels, you can get a lot of free stock photos. And then, of course, you know, they'll you know, promote uh, purchasing, you know, other photos and whatnot. And also, this is a cool little community where they actually encourage you to at least thank the photographer in some way, shape, or form if you're using their free stock photo. But the, you're covered on the licensing to use these photos, which is really important. Another site I love for this is called Dreams Time. I have an account with them. This one I actually pay for. You know, but it's it's worth it. You get good quality images that not everybody else and their mother is using on their blog. So uh, figure while I'm on the subject, might as well cover that real quick. Um, so what else can I talk about? I think it's important to plan the organization of your content when you're doing something like this, right? So that's the last part of this that I want to mention. And I'm going to uh, bring over uh, another tab here from my browser on my other screen. Uh, I use a tool called DynaList, which is really cool. Just think of it as bullet points on steroids because this allows you to kind of lay things out very nicely. So I have my QuickBooks Online category. I'll have a subcategory probably for payroll, another subcategory for sales, uh, customers and accounts receivable. I've already got, um, let's go back to my categories here. And I love the breadcrumbs, the way they uh, leave it there. I've already got uh, the fundamentals of bookkeeping, so I'm actually going to just copy that in here, right? And it's that easy. And then if I want to move something around, it's a, an easy click and drag. I love this product because it makes it really easy to do exactly this kind of thing. Organizing it. Uh, Zoom, which you saw in here, is uh, I do a weekly Zoom every Friday. Sorry, I don't know why I've got that open. I do a weekly Zoom every Friday, which is an hour-long kind of webinar where I'll often, you know, uh, uncover or just demonstrate some tip or trick or how to use some app. Uh, Airtable is one I've been talking about recently, so it was sort of top of mind. So I might have a category for Airtable for basic blog posts, you know, where I might do a five to 15 minute video covering some specific how to on Airtable. But then I also have Zooms that I've done, which are an hour long, you know, covering Airtable. So I might have two Airtable sort of categories within my blog, one for just blog posts, essentially, and another for the Zooms that I might have done covering Airtable. So another little, um, uh, little uh, product feedback, something I would love to see in Kajabi is the ability to tag these because when you create a new post, um, there's no way to tag this stuff here if I go back. I don't think so anyway. Let me, I should double check that. Um, but I don't recall seeing anything like that where you could tag it. If I go into uh, like this one here, Bookkeeping Basics. Um, yeah, there, there's no tagging capabilities here. So that would be a cool thing to have. So I could take something like Airtable and string it together, but still keep it separated in terms of what's a Zoom versus what's a basic blog post, right? So, because uh, then within this, I might want to do Airtable like Airtable for real estate professionals, right? For accountants, I might just kind of subdivide, subcategorize Airtable by industry, because that's how I tend to do these things is how to use Airtable for a real estate broker or agent or how accountants can use it and so on and so forth. And then I'll have some more general stuff like track anything with Airtable is actually the name of a blog post I've done, which I'll probably move over here eventually. Um, so, so DynaList is this product, really cool way to kind of help plan and organize something like this that you're doing 
when you're trying to get this all set up and figure out how to organize your content. So I hope that helps. Uh, I hope you find this valuable and give, I hope it gives you some ideas for how and why you might want to use a product in Kajabi to lay out your blog instead of using the actual blog. Uh, if you're watching this, and I'm, I'm planning on posting this to the Kajabi users group if they'll allow me, um, so just post your comments below. All right? I suppose I might post it, and if it's, I'm breaking some rules with it, they'll remove it. Um, but I'll probably ask somebody beforehand just out of respect, of course. Um, so if you do see this in the Kajabi group, post your comments below. If you're seeing this on YouTube or in my Kajabi blog, because I'll probably post it there too, uh, and I'll probably create a category for videos that I do on Kajabi because I this is what I do when I fall in love with a product like this. You can bet I'm going to do a bunch of videos as I learn how to use it, showing others how they can use it. That's kind of who I am and what I do and how I do it. So post your comments and questions below wherever you happen to be watching this. I look forward to getting them. And I look forward to answering them. And I look forward to helping you become more productive with the software that you're using. I hope you found this valuable. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. And I look forward to seeing you on the web.